My people, my people, my people. Welcome to the My People Podcast, where we talk with influencers in business, fashion, and lifestyle. I'm your host, The Wealthy Guy. I'm a men's style expert, custom clothier, and published photographer. This week on episode 11 of the My People Podcast, we are here with Corey Bloomer, aka Chef Corb. Now, let me tell y'all a little bit about Chef Corb. I've known Chef Corb for a really long time, but let me let let you guys know, you know, where he's from, what he's all about. So Corey Bloomer, also known as Corb the Chef, Brooklyn born, Harlem raised, has a passion for culinary and connecting with his community. Culinary is in his bloodline. His grandfather was an amazing chef using his famous biscuits. He introduced Corb into the kitchen. The different types of cuisine in Harlem was enticing and encouraged him to expand his palate. He studied French culinary along with pastry at the illustrious The Art Institute. He worked for Harlem's very famous family chain restaurant, Taste of Seafood, as well as Ashford and Simpson's The Sugar Bar and Harlem's Red Rooster. At these establishments, Corp quickly envisioned the legacy he wanted to leave within the culinary world while connecting with people through food. So, Corb the Chef, welcome to the My People Podcast. How are you today? How you doing? How you doing? I am good. So, you know, I know you, right? But the listeners don't know you. So, you know, I've known Corey for a very long time. He's been cooking for... A good minute. He ain't make me no meals, <laughs> <laughs> but he, he keep promising to make a meal. But I ain't get no meal yet. So hopefully after you know after the podcast, you know I can get him to like whip something up at some point. So Corb the chef, tell us a little bit about yourself. Brooklyn, Brooklyn born, right? But. But raised in Harlem, you know, um, my mom moved to Harlem when I was about nine, ten years old. Yep. And um, I quickly saw the difference in between living in Brooklyn and living in Harlem. You know, Harlem was a little more diverse. You know, you could um, go in any corner, taste any food. So, you know, it kind of encouraged me to kind of want more. Yep. Um, not only from my culture, but from other cultures, too. So, you know, I dived in. Later on in life, I dived into culinary school, um, and I kind of, going through culinary school, I couldn't kind of, I didn't find myself, you know, because right. they were teaching me things like French food, and I couldn't connect to that stuff, right. you know, coming from, you know, African-American community. So, um, I took a course, a personal uh, personal chef course, right. and my dean basically taught me how to make money while in school. Right. And... That's what I did, and I kind of took off. And right, so let me ask you: so how did he teach you how to make money? So he ba- he basically um, sh- showed us how to create formulas for recipes yep. and um, purchase, and learning different vendors and being able to cook portions for two people, three people, four people. Right, and you know that that kind of set me off to be able to go into someone's house and you know, cook for them. Right. Because you've, you've been a private chef before too, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that is to me a very, a very cool experience, right? To, to cook for like a family or or someone. It's an amazing experience. Um, so went to culinary school, couldn't really associate with the French Cuisine, right? You wasn't feeling the escargot. Nah, I was, nope. feeling, I was not feeling the escargot. The I, escargot I actually love escargot, it. though. I actually, people always think I'm crazy. Um, you know, I haven't been to any French restaurants lately, but anytime I go on a cruise, like usually at the dinners, one of the nights they, you know, one of the appetizers will be escargot, <laughs> and I always get it. I always get it, but. You know, people will be like, well, what does it taste like if they've never tasted it, right? Yes. What does it taste like? And I always say, it tastes like what it's cooked in, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, basically, basically. Right. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's a weird texture to it. But, right. You know, um, I couldn't get with it. You, you know? can't get um, with it. I can cook it for someone, but it's just not something that I kind of can relate to. And it's important to me that when you work, you want to relate to what it is that you're doing and you want to love it. So, right. 
that connection just wasn't happening for me. Right. So let me ask you this. So at what point did you say, I want to cook for, I, I want to, you know, cook for a living. I want cooking to be like my life. Well, um, well, I'm a single father. So right. when my daughter was born, um, I just decided to take it serious. You know, right. I was already working in the field. You know, I was working for a family chain, the Taste of Seafood, House yep. of Seafood. And I kind of saw the money that, you know, they were bringing in. And it, right. they had lines of people just ordering right. food for days. So I kind of took it serious when I um, realized that I was having a child. Right. So for those of you who aren't in New York and aren't, familiar with the taste of seafood the taste of seafood is probably i would say especially in harlem the most popular seafood yes it's the, it like is the, the most yeah, popular yeah seafood, it is yes. the most popular seafood like establishment um and it's you know when i moved to the east side before they opened the one oh, you know right, right yeah, yeah 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 i was so excited when i saw that they were opening it you know, because I had been used to going to a taste, a taste of seafood on 125th and then it moved across the street and it was a lot going on and then I moved. So when I saw that it was there, I was like, yes, you know, like I love it. And I, I order from there, you know, from time to time. Yeah, that's cool. That's um, cool. So you had your daughter and you said, you know what? I'm good at, I'm, I'm good at cooking. I see the money that can be made. I'm by gonna, the you know food industry, this is the path that I want to take. Yes, yes, and I and I took it serious. You know? Yeah. So, what would you say? You know, because I know that you you know you have your your business right, and and tell us a little bit about your business. Well, I, I run a, a, a full blown catering service. Um, as of today, someone told me to stop saying it's small. Stop using the word small. Right. So. I, I'm gonna stop saying a small catering business, and um, I run a catering service, a full blown catering service, and it's in Harlem, and we cater to a lot of different people in Harlem, a lot of different companies, nonprofit organizations, and um, private businesses, and right. just all over Harlem, New York City, Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, and right. we serve soul food, but we do infusions and we do small bites. We kind of specialize in small bites. Um, right. For a particular reason, as far as proportions, yep. you, know, you know. Yeah, it always makes sense to, um, especially at an event, right? Like, if it's not a sit-down dinner, you don't necessarily want to have a plate. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Very important. You, yes, you, yes. you just kind of want to have something that you can just pick, pick up, up and, and, go. and just yes. and go. And that just makes so, so much sense. It's like... If you go to an event that's not a sit down dinner and you have to fix a plate yes, instead, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going it on. is. So tell tell me. So what I what I want to know is like what are some of the um, what are some of the bite size you know things that people order. So something that you don't usually see on a, a Corbentizer or appetizers. We call them Corbentizers for right. the business. Is a chicken and waffle, a small bite chicken and waffle. Right. So. You know, just a, a small portion of waffle, a small portion of chicken. Yeah. You know, we also do it vegan style. Yep. And um, a nice small little tray, make it look pretty, and right. we send it out. So vegan style, what is that? So vegan style, it's kind of you know using no egg, ah, no dairy okay. products. Yeah. Of that source and no meat. And no meat. Yes. So it's like a, like a soy chicken. Yeah, it's not soy. I kind of created myself from. Okay. Uh, a seitan. Like a tofu chicken. Yeah. It's it's not tofu, but it's more of a yeast. It's made from a yeast. Mm, that's you know? in, that's and, interesting. Yeah. It's like seasoned. Yes, yes. All yes. right. So you season it just like you season it. Whatever you season your chicken with. Right, right. You season it just like that. Right. So I think I'm, you're going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to sample. Yes, sample. yes. I'm not have... a, and I'm not a, uh, I eat chicken. Uh -huh. I, I eat meat, right? Um. So the only time that I've really had uh you know what would be considered vegan type of dishes was when i lived in china mm -hmm. there was this one restaurant that we went to that you know kind of replicated all of the chinese dishes that we know here right like beef and broccoli <laughs> chicken <laughs> american chinese right food. right but <laughs> it was uh you know it was tofu mm -hmm. right and and you know the tofu 
it it takes that was the only place that I would be like, okay, yes, I mm-hmm. wanna I wanna go there. But other than that, I'm not a big fan of tofu, tofu. because of the texture. But I've tasted tofu where it's been like really good and it and it tastes like you know what whatever it is whatever that it's it is. supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so that's good. Um let's talk a little bit about what are some of like the challenges that you face, you know, as a you know, as as a catering service here in, you know, in in the city. A lot of the ch- one of the challenges that I uh face a lot is um just just being an African American business owner is am I going to get the job done you know right you can go in a room and you can feel everybody you know you could be in a meeting and you can feel everybody want you to right. do the job right but you can also feel the energy of people not feeling like you're going to be successful right 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 completing right. the job you yep. know and that's one thing that's really really important to me you know so like I love when people see my presence and then they they try to figure out or they have these thoughts of us not completing a job. And right. then when we do complete the job, the energy is just amazing in the room, you know? Right. And I, um, this year, I really want to work on that because that a lot of that has to do with presence and um, the way you look. Right, and right. What you wear. And right. That whole process. So, right, you know. right. So let's talk about that a little bit, right? So I know you and I know that you are much more relaxed, right? Uh, in terms of the way that you dress. But I've seen you in... A suit before and a tie and a whole thing. How do you think that? So when you go to a meeting, right? You have a potential client that says, "Hey, we are having so and so event. We're looking for you know a vendor to service the food. You know, come in to meet with us. How do you come into the meeting? Well, depending on who the client is, because I have some clients that that I've worked for for the last four years, right? Um. But a new client, it all depends on the timing, you know, right. because as a business owner, you either have a meeting here, especially when you're a chef, when you're dealing with paperwork. So depending on the timing, sometimes I may show up in a white t-shirt. And, right. You know, that's when you get that energy. You know, right. who, who's this guy? Right. Who right. is he? Right. He has a white t-shirt on, you right. know, and how is he going to get the job done? Right. You know, right. so right. that all depends on, you know, the timing. So most of the time... It's a white t-shirt. Right. That's your look. That's my look. <laughs> Most of the time, it's a white t-shirt. Right. So, you know, um, but I want to work on that this year, you right, know, and, right. and change that because that's just another market, you know? Right. Like you don't want to lose that market due to a white t-shirt. Right. Right. That's a, that, that to me is a, is a, is a tough one because it's just like, do you, because we live in such a conformist society, right? Like that people associate business with dressing up, Yes. right? So you walking in with a t-shirt, they're in their head because we're conditioned to think that someone with a suit should be walking yes, in, yes. they're thrown off yes. and then automatically think like, okay, well, who is this guy? Is he going to be able to deliver? But your skill is not dressing up. Yes. Your yes. skill is making the food. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and making the food taste good, exactly. right? Um, so yeah, so that I'm I'm sure that that is a challenge. Dude, like, I got a question for you though. Do you ever wear the chef the chef coat? Yes, I wear the chef coat. Uh that does that that amaze people. People want, <laughs> people rather wear you people rather you come in a meeting with a chef coat right. than a, a suit on. You right, know? right, right. But um the chef jacket is entertaining. It's for entertainment, you know. Right. And um, that comes with a personal chef service. Right. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. No. Definitely, I will want you to come to the meeting with the chef coat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of because sense. then I'm like, okay, this is a real yes, chef. Yes, it's yes, just yes. crazy it's, how yeah. we're conditioned to think certain, you know, <laughs> like think things about people. Um, but it's a very real thing. Yeah. So I understand why you, you know are saying you want to like kind of change like change it um in in terms of the way that that you dress um let's see what else so single parent right you got a teenage daughter teenage daughter teenage daughter and um you know so is she a good cook she's okay <laughs> To try to get her she's gonna to be mad yes. when she see when she see this. Yeah, yeah. she's she, she's okay. Like she likes to scramble eggs. And, right. But her thing is, you know, Uber Eats and that whole process. Right. But um, 
I think if she had to get in the kitchen, she's watched me long enough right, to right. really like throw down if she had to survive for herself. Right. And um, but to get her to help me in the kitchen or to get her to look up a recipe or to get her to do anything that's needed, right? It is. It was really complicated. Right. It's and not her like, thing. Daddy, can you make me some banana pudding? Right. Everything right. is daddy. Can you make me this? Daddy. Right. So, she know. listen because she's smart. She said, yeah, she's "I'm gonna smart. just go to the expert. Yes, yes. I'm not yes. going to even mess around and try to do, you know, <laughs> do something on my own. I'm gonna just go to the person who I know can like make it well. Yes, yeah, super um, smart. So at what? So let so let me ask you this. So at what age did you like kind of first say, "Hey, let me show you how something is made," and like bring her in the kitchen to? to actually make a dish or show how a dish is made? Probably about nine or 10 years old. Yep. Yeah, where I started bringing her in. But um, I started at a younger age, I just kind of made sure she was eating proper. You know? She right. was introduced to food at a very young age. So right. Going into the supermarket, identifying with different products and um, fruits and vegetables. Right. And tasting them and she's always, so she loves food, you know? Right. And, yeah, it's just about getting her in the kitchen at this age is more the complicated. Thing. Right. What is uh, so? I got a question for you. What What is one of the most, if if you know, like off the top of your head, what is one of the most complicated things that you know how to make? The most complicated thing that I know how to make, depending on who I'm cooking it for, is it could be a crepe. A, a crepe. crepe. Yeah, because of the texture, the thickness. Some right. people like it a little thicker than others right. um but anytime I, I'm, I'm doing a crate i kind of like gotta give a, a taste before i actually right totally make the whole right. meal or whatever it is that i'm making to put inside of the crate right yeah the last time that i had a crepe was a long time ago actually um probably about 12 12 years ago wow. but it was it was it was a crepe actually in France. Uh. So, <laughs> so, so, so yeah, so I, I'll throw that in, but yeah, no, that a crepe is not something that I would normally eat. Um, but like I would eat it probably like as a dessert. A lot of times yeah, I see it like most likely, yeah, as, as a dessert, dessert right? Yeah, or yeah. strawberries yes, yeah. or some cream yeah. or, or something like that. All right. So it's just about the measurements with that, but you know, a lot of things, um, with bacon, bacon it's a little complicated for me because i'm like i like to hear i like to turn up the fire i like right. to hear things burning sizzling right so bacon is a little more tempting tempting for me like i right. gotta temp everything i know what not to ask you uh to make if i you know need you to cater something i won't ask for a crepe yeah don't ask, <laughs> for a crepe. don't ask for a crepe so give me something else that you think you know is challenging for you to make something that's challenging for me to make um a lot of off the back of my head, wow. What about a meat? Or you just you slay the meat? Nah, I slay the meat. <laughs> I slay the meat. Right. Like no lie. Like uh that's all about, you know, identifying flavors, so that's kinda right. easy. But just bacon. Bacon is like that like that's the most complicated thing for me. Like just right. to wait for a cake to bake. Right. You know, it's all my patience, you know? It's right. All, it's just um, what is complicated for me to make? I am not. Wow. I'm not a good. I'm not a good baker, right? Like I can. I can like cook meals, yeah. but the dessert, it got to be store bought or something yeah, because yeah, I'm not. not yeah, store. yeah. I'm not a good. I'm not a good baker. But meats, I know how to cook. I know how to make sides. I know how to. I I know my way around the kitchen in regards to like cooking a dinner, um, but. It, Desserts, cakes, not good at cookie, none of that stuff. That's yeah. not my. That's not my specialty. I wanted to ask you about. So you know, in thinking about black people food, right? Black people food. Black people food, right? Mac and cheese, collard greens, mac fried and chicken. I want to specifically talk about mac and cheese, mac right? And because cheese. this, we all know that there's certain dishes that you don't volunteer to make if. People's never tasted it from you before, yes, right? Yes, you go yes, to, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. and what are those dishes? Those dishes are mac and cheese, mac and cheese, of fried course, fried chicken, fried chicken, collard greens, collard greens, and uh, says one potato more. salad, potato salad, for sure. Yeah, don't touch the potato right. salad. You yeah. never 
say that you're going to make the potato salad when no one has yes, tasted nah. your potato salad that's going to like... so true. Especially if the host is like, it has never tasted yes. it, to be like, to sign off. Nah, you cannot. You know? And that, they quick to throw you under the bus if you do make it. it if, if you make it, right. and, it's, and somebody say, who made the potato yeah, everybody salad? Everybody knows Oh, made Evelyn it. made it. Oh, <laughs> man. Mm, it's not, it's Evelyn, not good. <laughs> yeah, nah, it's the truth, though. It's the truth. Um, but in terms of mac and cheese, right? If you were to grade... Right, have to give a grade for someone's mac and cheese, right? What are the key elements that you look for in a good mac and cheese? The key, Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a very, <laughs> that's a very good question. Nah, seriously, because a lot of people always ask me, how do you make your mac and cheese? Please, check out that mac and cheese. <laughs> check it out. The stringiness, the texture, it's, right. it's good. Right. But, um... Just making sure that you, the creaming process, there's a creaming process when you're making mac and cheese yep. that a lot of people don't use. They tend to like throw the milk on top of the, throw the milk on inside of the pan. Right. But there's a creaming process that's very important. Right. Which is the egg uh -huh. and the milk. Yep. You have to really mix that. Right. You know, and make sure the texture of it is like close to a heavy cream. Right. You know, a right. thickness, you know. Some people use heavy cream, but that just, I think that takes away from the flavor. And making sure that you mix in the noodle in while the noodles are hot. So you want to strain your noodles, uh -huh. make sure they're hot, and then you want to mix that into your milk. Right. All right? Some people add the egg, mix it, but then you see all of these little cooked pieces of egg. Right, right, of right. So you just want to look for that creamy texture in your stern, too, also. I, I never thought about that. Yeah. That's true, though. Yeah, it's very would, important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, just let y'all know a lot of things. Exactly. Like mac and cheese. Exactly. Right. Oh but every, everybody's mac and cheese is different. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's mac and cheese is different. Everybody's mac and cheese yeah. is different. Yes. And yeah. oh, I put Gouda in it. I put <laughs> this. I put that. And my thing is just making sure that texture. So when you whipping that cheese... You don't see that cooked egg. It's right, like right. curdled egg. You don't want, you don't you don't want, want to see that. that. You don't want to see that. So for for what about cheeses? Do you, you know should people stay you know relatively straightforward with the cheese like a cheddar or yeah? Can I, you get you know because I, I've I've seen creative. four cheese mac, uh, three cheese. You know cheddar and gouda, <laughs> cheddar and this. I actually, my. you want to know what my my secret cheese is in my mac and cheese? Right. And people love my mac and cheese. Oh, it's, it? it's certified. Pepper Jack. Oh, Pepper Jack. That's a good cheese. Yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah. 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 <laughs> add a little kick to it. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, Pepper Jack cheese is good. So I, I think people should go with the cheese that they're comfortable with, you know, right. um, that you know. You right. Know? Um, pepper Jack cheese is a good cheese. Yep. Gouda, smoked Gouda, heavy, heavy smoked Gouda. Yep. Is really a good cheese. And um, you know, you can't forget the craft. The craft <laughs> sharp. Craft sharp. You have to put that in there. And you know, I have a secret cheese that I'm just not gonna tell. But right. um craft, you have to put that craft in yeah, there. Yeah, no, I, I am a uh the cheese that I use is cracker barrel. Cracker barrel. Yeah. Is good so cracker barrel, either cracker barrel or like a crack. Yeah. You know, I get I get upset. You know, if I see a mac and cheese made with like a cheese brand that I don't know. Oh yeah, nah. You have to. You use have to use good use cheese. And <laughs> cracker barrel is the grandma cheese. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm mad I didn't even say that. He said right, it before me, right, but that, right. that's very important. Like, right. You get down there and you start shredding that cheese yourself. Right, like, right. You run it through a machine, you know. Right, exactly. So, yeah, but no, mac and cheese is like one of those dishes that... Yeah, it has to be right. It, it, that has to be right. You don't want to cut it. You do not want to mess up. You don't want to mess it up. On the mac and cheese. You don't want to overcook it, you know. You don't want to do any of that. So, let's talk a little bit about fried chicken. So, do you... Um, do you brine your chicken first? I, we brine all of our meats. Yep. So whatever it is that we're cooking, we brine it. Um, we we have about 30 orders of turkey already, and we, we, we're going to brine all of those turkeys. Yep. You know? um, and when it comes to brining, it's just whatever you want to taste in the turkey. Right. You know, they right. have, you know, the, like I said, the French, they use salt and pepper. Very simple. Salt, pepper, right. a little bit of sugar. Right. But, um... If you Latin, you gonna want to taste something up in there, right? right. So you want to throw some sofrito in there. Yeah. You want to throw some flavor, some onion powder, garlic powder. Right. You know, boil that water, get it up to temperature, right. then bring it down, and then soak that turkey for about three days. Yeah. 
Yeah, oh, when man. when I make um I make this Cuban chicken dish and I marinate it in orange juice, lime, lemon, gar like minced garlic, mm -hmm. onion, uh Cumin. Not, cumin. <laughs> I was Adobo. waiting for that cumin. cumin. The cumin you you gotta have key. that cumin. The cumin is that's key. That's key, people. <laughs> that's key yes. and that's profiling flavors. Right. You the, must the know. The cumin is key yes. For, yes. For, for that flavor. But, you know, get that going. Get that marinade going. Let it go, like, overnight. And yeah. then when I actually make it, yes. oh, yes. this chicken yes. is so good. Yes. Some red chilies in oh, there. Man. Oh, Holy. this is... <laughs> so, yeah. But, no, definitely mac and cheese. Gotta be right. Gotta be right. Whoever make the fried chicken, gotta, gotta be, be right. right. Cannot play around. That is not... Um, One thing joke. about fried chicken that everybody's doing, I just have to say this. Stop yep. putting sasoma on your fried chicken. Oh. Stop making your chicken bright orange. Stop adding the sasoma, right. please. It has MSG in it. It's no good. Go to the store and get some smoked paprika. It'll oh, give you that same yes. color. It'll give right. you a little heat. And... um. Just get rid of the sasson. Right. So, so, so I'm I used to be guilty of oh, sasson on too. the chicken. Me too. Right. Throw it, throw in that, yeah. throw, throw that extra seasoning, and then yes, it turns it yes. very red. <laughs> but for years, I've not used sasson yeah. on on chicken. Um, sasson is good though. I, I do use. Good. I do put a little bit of sasson if I'm making. Um, like black beans, yeah. I put a little bit in there. You have in other there. things like a bee jewel. I don't know if mm -hmm. you ever heard it or uh, what is saffron. That? Yeah, 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 saffron. So it, of it, course, it gives that color. It gives yep. that saffron gives off that flavor. Yeah, also. saffron rice is delicious. Or a, a natte oil, you know. Right, um, right, because so it's, like, it's red. Yes, because yeah, it's red. Yeah, yeah. So, but do you? But do you think it's people are putting it to get the color or to get the flavor? I think people are using it to get the color because um, a lot of people in our community where they make they so called make Latin rice, right. Latin rice, they tend to just add that color without the the actually profile of sofrito. So right, you right, can use right. you can make that rice without the color and still have that taste that and taste. the rice come out white. Right, you know. Right, so right. I think it's more for color. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know you actually taught me something today because I didn't even realize that Sasson had MSG in it. Yeah. Yeah. It has MSG in it. So if you notice on some of the boxes, it says no MSG. Right. And then it has some boxes that have MSG in it. Right. Yeah. Um, Accent. That's, that's it has MSG. MSG. Oh, for sure. Yes. Yeah, I know so that for sure. A lot of people use those things in their food and it's not like, you're not really tasting what the food tastes like. Right. 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 Because flavor enhances. It enhances the flavor that of you're it. putting in there. So you don't know if it's too much salt, too much pepper. Right. Right. Yeah. No, that's true. I try to, I used to be, um, a accent. I used to use accent. I stopped. That chicken, right? Yeah. <laughs> I stopped using accent a long time ago, yeah. but that used to be like one of my, you know, go to yeah, adding, adding that to, you know, the, the seasoning, um, mix, but yeah, no, your chicken gotta be right. You heard it here. Chef Crispy. Corp said no sasson. <laughs> No sasson. No sasson on the chicken. And you still could you still could be cooking South American food without the sasson. Right. You know? Right. So let's talk about you just the crispiness of it. Of the chicken. Of the chicken. Yes. Right? So I cook I will make the fried chicken two ways. Right? So one, it will just kind of be, you know, I'll take like my flour and seasoning mixture and just like mix the chicken. And then the other way is I do like a egg and buttermilk like mixture dip the chicken then put it in like the flour yeah that's a good way also um there's multiple ways of frying chicken right, right? um depending on how thick you want your batter right you know how flaky you want your batter because you use the buttermilk you're not going to get that flaky right if you look at Popeye's chicken it has that flaky the flakes just fall off right of the chicken the buttermilk prevents that from happening. Right. So when you just right. use the egg and a flour, that causes the flakiness. So right. it depends on what type of crunchiness you want. Right. You know? Right. Do you um do you ever do any like Asian style dishes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um 
it's funny because I, I always, when I see Asian people, um, when I see um, actually, yeah, Asian people, I tend to tell them fried chicken is one of their dishes. It's not right. really, you know, it's not really our dish. Right. You know, right. you know, if you go back in time, you'll realize that you know, um, the Asians, you know, it's history. You right, realize right. through history who met who. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I do Asian. We do all their. I do Asian bowls. Uh, we do, uh, I do a pokey bowl sometimes, yep. you know, but a lot of that stuff I do for myself first before I introduce it to the crowd. Right. Um, uh, I test it on my family. Right. Things of that sort. But, um, yeah, we do infusion. So we try to infuse that stuff into Different. our menu, our soul food. Right. Um, and what about, um, this, oh, so this is what I want to ask you. What has been the largest crowd or number of people that you've, done an event for well, that you had to cook for well the largest crowd was 600 people like and that that was that's that was off the jump off like seriously right. like that was me just going to somebody telling them i cater and they said uh can you feed this amount of people and it was it was actually 300 people but right i had to do uh corbentizer so right. it was like for a tea party and it was 300 people and each person had 10 pieces. Right. So, um, I'm like, where the hell am I going to do this at? Right. Because right, you, know, right. you had to prepare the food. I had to prepare the food. People. And, you know, I, I didn't think, I didn't think the process out. I just said, yes, I'm going to do it. And, right. Um, 300 people. And you pulled it off. I pulled it off. And people said they loved it. And the people food. said they loved it. And they're still my clients to this day. Right. So, but during the process, right, because you said you didn't realize the... I guess the the breadth of of the actual project. Yes. What was going through your mind at that time? Well, it was a twenty four hour job. So right. Like I was up for twenty four hours, and um, at the beginning, like you're cool, but right. as time start ticking and you getting closer to that hour, you just start freaking out because you right. start seeing pans everywhere. Right. And I don't even have room for this stuff, and you stuffing things in the refrigerator just to make it happen. And, right. You know, you start freaking out. You, right. you freak out, but that freak out becomes managed time in the future. You know, right. I look back and I say, you know what, if I didn't go through that process, the way that I'm managing my time now in the kitchen wouldn't right. be so great, you know? Right. But, right. um... It's just all a learning process. Right. So you you really, in, on that particular job, you really got thrown into the frying yeah, pan. got thrown into the <laughs> frying pan. Got thrown straight into the frying right. pan. Right. And had to like really and figure out. Had to make out. it happen. That's By me. myself. Right. That's how you someone helping you. Nobody helping me. I just took the job on. Um, I had to make the delivery by myself. You know? What? Yes. Yes. That is That's, nuts. It's nuts. You know. Um, I know you were sweating. Sweating. <laughs> Totally sweating. I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna get this job done? You know, and but but it's it's all about passion. You know, it's all about right. loving what you do. Like you know, right. um, you can't fail when you love what you do. You know, right? It's, that, it's that is possible to fail. Like you could fall, but you get back up so much easier than doing something that you don't love. Yes, you know? yeah, I agree. I agree. Like you, you be like, okay, this happened, but yes, it's a part of yes what this is. Let me. I have to keep going. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That's a really good point. Yeah, you, know? you let that play into your religion, whatever religion you is, and you just let 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 your God guide you. You know, right, right. Um. So yeah. So no. That's that. That is a lot of people, and you know, I didn't think that you were gonna say. I knew you would give a big number, but I didn't think you were gonna say you did it by yourself. Yeah, by myself. You know. But now, when you're doing the catering, you're working with. Yeah, I have a team. You have a team of people, yeah, yeah, right? Yes. Um. And these are people who, you know, that you hired, that yeah, people wanted to work with. Yeah, uh, over time. Temp agencies. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then they just kind of stay, yeah, like, they, stay they, with they you. Stay. Yeah, they always call. You have work? You have any work? Right. Yeah, so, you know, you have your, your list of people that you know are going to be there for you. And then you have a list of people that may be there for you, you know? Right. And then you just send out an email to all of them see who responds first right okay so i got kind of like a hard question for you but it's a more so like uh -oh. thinking on your feet this is like a chop uh -oh. this is like a chop i got a chop basket for uh -oh. you <laughs> here we go <laughs> okay so this is the chop basket so you have a um you got a beef tongue a beef tongue <laughs> <laughs> you got a beef tongue you got some some radishes, 
You got um, you got some uh, scallions, and you got uh, cause you know they always throw in something that is just totally like peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's let's go with it. Let's peanut go butter, with it. Right? peanut butter. So All you right. got beef tongue, you got radish, you got scallion, you got peanut butter. What you gonna do? So first, I'm gonna take the peanut butter. I'm gonna use the peanut butter and a scallion. So I'm, yep. gonna, I'm gonna saute some scallions. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna run to the kitchen get some coconut milk. Yep. And then I'm gonna uh, reduce that coconut milk. Add a little peanut butter to that. Um, so now you have like a peanut butter, coconut, yep. kind of like Thai situation. Yeah, I knew you was going there. I knew you was going um, there. Okay. Yep. So now you have that going on. So while I have that sauce kicking, I'm going to braise the tongue. I'm going to slice it down, yep. make it make it into some really thin slices, yep. and I'm going to braise that. After I braise that, I'm going to lay them on a plate, Yep. pour that sauce right over that. Right. And I'm going to use whatever I uh, season the sauce with, I'm going to season, I'm going to braise the tongue with. Right. And, you know, there it is. And braise, that's it. coconut. Right. Thai. Boom. In the building. Peanut butter. Up. <laughs> <laughs> but no, once, once, once you said, once you said you're going to grab the coconut milk, I knew you were going Thai, right? Yeah, yes, yes. Especially with the peanut butter. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, so yes. I was like, okay, he, he's, he's about to go, go a Thai route. Yeah, you freaked me out. Right. When, you said, when you said scallions <laughs> and like, I'm like, where, where are we going to go? This. Right, right, right. <laughs> but no, that was quick. That was quick on, on, on your feet. You know, like I know for me, I cannot go on chopped. It moves too fast. Yeah. You know, like um chop is for the special people. You know the right. people that they say, sit down in class to. You're not listening. Right, right, right. You move too fast. You move too much. Right, That's what right. chop is for. That's what the right. kitchen is for. Right. So, but yeah, no, I, I, I love chopped, and that was that was good. You thought really quickly on your feet. I don't know what it would taste like, but I'm gonna try. Uh, <laughs> ooh, that tongue. Oh my gosh, that tongue. I'm gonna trust you <laughs> on on that. All right. So now I kind of want to pivot into. Fashion, you know, wealthy guys all about the fashion and style. So, you know, even though you're a chef, you know, I want to talk to you a little bit about we we touched on it a bit, right? In terms of you, more so a casual guy, right? Like t-shirt and jeans and sneakers. Um, but you know, what I want to know is, I, I always ask the guests, like, when did you learn how to tie a tie? I learned. This is weird, but I, I'm sorry, but I've I learned how to tie a tie when I was about 20. 20 years old. Yeah, I think. When did YouTube first kind of start kicking in? Um, when YouTube first started kicking that's in. That's when you learned that's how to tie a tie. I went on YouTube. I had an interview for a job, and I used to go next door to my next door neighbor yep. to help have him tie my tie. Right. And he had passed away. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to have to do this myself. So right. I went on YouTube, and you know. I just kept hearing a guy say, "Keep the thin end, keep the thin end shorter than the big end. Keep right. the thin end shorter than the big end." <laughs> so that always stood in my head. But my right. knots are not great. But, right. You know, it's tied. It's tied enough. Yeah. I mean, I I seen you in pictures in a tie before, and it looked fine. All right. I I couldn't say you know, coming from I, you. That's, that's right. Exactly. Big. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So. You into, you know, I know you for a long time, like I said, you, you love sneakers. Love sneakers. You, you love sneakers. You love sneakers and jeans. Love jeans. Um, that's, that's your style. That's it. That's me. That's what you want to wear. That's me. Besides, that's what I want to wear, yes. Right, right. That's, that's what, what you want to wear. wear. Um, what color is the chef coat? Um, I have two of them. I have three of them. A red one, yep. a white one, and a black one. Right, and does it have like your name on it? Yeah, they all uh, they're all labeled for whatever the situation is. So right. wherever I'm at, like I have one for the catering service. Right, I have one for uh, help me out kitchen. Right, and I have one that I use just either or. You know, it's right, like, like kind of universal. Right, so let's talk a little bit about help me out kitchen. What is that? So help me out kitchen is a project that I've been working on big in my head. Right, for a very long time, but um. So it's basically me uh, on, on YouTube kind of connecting with a lot of the people that um, I either disconnected with in the past or right. maybe politicians in my community, uh, other cooks, artists, and we're kind of building that now. So, and we're also going to be selling product on that channel also. So. Right. 
So that is very exciting. So let's talk a little bit more about that, right? Like, well, as much as you could talk about it, right? So you you have this idea for this a show essentially, right? Because yes. you could you could put a show on anybody Any, could yes, put do yes, put yes. a show do a show now, right? You have this idea for a show where you have guests, right? It takes place kind of like in 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 the kitchen, yes, right? And you're cooking. And we're cooking. And yeah. talking. And talking. All right? So the guest doesn't necessarily have to be another chef, no. right? It could be a someone in the community. Yeah, somebody that want to learn how to cook something. Right. Somebody that saw something they wanted to taste. Right. Or just learning how to cook for your husband or your significant other. You right, know, right, just, right. Just every day eating talk, you know, and right. current events and what's yep. going on in the world. Okay, I think that's a great idea for for a show, and especially from a black man. Yes. Right? Because a lot of the cooking shows that I watch, right, they may have black people in them, but the host is not black. Yes. I'm trying to think now, do I know any cooking shows where the host there's, is black? Right now at this moment, black. there's not really. Like a major one. Yeah, nah, there's not really any. You have a few Asians, you have... Caucasians is not really right. Not a black right person that you like, chef. Yes, that's so and so. And say, right, yes. like he on TV, on no. TV. Yeah, yeah, on TV. That that like has a show that we know about. Yes. No. Um, you know, like when I think of cooking shows, I automatically think of like Beat Bobby Flay, and Right, guys, right, right. Yeah, yeah, Those yeah. people. I don't. I don't, I can't. Yeah. So we we need it. Yeah, we need it. We need we, it. We, we need, we're gonna make it happen. Yeah, yeah, we need you know that that black voice to to come on and who let whoever the guests know how to make that mac and cheese. How to make that mac and cheese. <laughs> how to make it mac and, and cheese. Don't don't use no generic cheese in there. No generic. You gotta cheese. use a cheese that black people That's know. It. That's, That's it. it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Certain tastes come with that cheese. Exactly, and you know if it's not in there. Yeah, you know. You know for you know. sure. So, you know, Corey, you know, it has been a pleasure having you on the My People podcast. You yes, know, yeah, yeah. I think that, you know, one, I learned some things today, right? I don't use Sasson anymore, <laughs> but. <laughs> But I didn't know that they had MSG, but I'll be sure to let people know. I probably, I think I have some in the cabinet, yeah. though. Like, <laughs> I think for everybody real. has some. Right, yeah. Um, and some accent, too, yeah. that I haven't used in a long, a really long time. Um, but it's been a pleasure having you on the show on my first season of the My People podcast. That's I really the first season. First season. I, so I really appreciate you coming out and, and, and doing the show. And I am looking forward to many, many great things from you in the future with your business and where you want to take your cooking empire, right? <laughs> not your cooking small nah, business. Nah, not the small business, the empire. <laughs> your cooking yes. empire. So with that said, tell everybody where they can find you. So you can find me on Instagram, uh, Corb the Chef Inc., uh, Facebook, Corb the Chef Inc., and also, you can check out our website, www.corbthechefinc. Right now, we're having a sweet potato giveaway. All you have to do is, you have to go to the website, which is Corb the Chef Inc., and you have to send your information through a website, yep. hashtag eye on a pie. We'll send you a number back. You post that number, and uh, we'll So, sweet potato pie giveaway. Yeah, sweet potato pie giveaway. Sweet potato pie made by you. Sweet potato pie made by me. <laughs> When is the when is the when is the contest end? It's it actually start October first. Oh, okay, perfect. Uh, and perfect. it runs straight through uh, Thanksgiving. Okay, perfect. So people have people have time, time. because yes. I was just thinking about in terms of when the show will air and yes. all of that stuff. So, okay, yeah. so good. So y'all have time. Y'all heard it here. Get you if you live in New York. Get your eye on the pie. Get your eye on the pie. Corb the chef Inc. Get you a Corb the chef. Sweet potato, potato pie. pie. <laughs> you probably get one before me if you win. Can I do uh, one thing? One thing. Yes, yes. I just want to say, my people, <laughs> my people, my people. Yes. It would, it's only right for people to come on and say, my yes. people, my people, my people. Um, so, thank you, Corey. I appreciate you. Thank you. So, my people, 
I hope you enjoyed this episode of the My People Podcast. You can also see what we look like on the Wealthy Guys YouTube channel. The link will be in the description of the podcast. Show us some love and subscribe to our show. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can do so on Instagram at the underscore my people underscore podcast or by email at the my people podcast at gmail.com. Again, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on your listening platform. It's the wealthy guy here with Corb the Chef, and I'll see you soon.